Good morning and welcome to St. John the Baptist. Before we begin our celebration of Mass, please take a moment to silence or turn off all cell phones. Our entrance hymn is found in the Missal number 104, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation, number 104 found in the Missal. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord? I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink? You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. The just one, because of his faith, shall live. Words taken from today's first reading. This is our answer to the question, how should we live? We should live by faith. This is the conclusion of the prophet's message, that whatever evil strikes, the person of faith will emerge victorious. Likewise, St. John wrote that the victory over the world is this faith of ours. We often hear it said that the evil people see in the world hinders their belief of God. But scripture reverses that notion and tells us that it is a belief in God which defeats the evil in the world. An informed faith is a faith which recognizes that God is almighty and consequently that he can do all things because he has all power. It is this power of God which we often do not give sufficient consideration to, which in turn kindles doubts within us. 
We know that God is almighty. We say it in the creed every week, but we fail to realize what this entails. Perhaps our failure is understandable since divine power is difficult for us to conceive. After all, we have no direct experience of it. Our life consists of dealing with an endless stream of obstacles highlighting our weaknesses, even when we pray for deliverance. A consequence of this is that, without realizing it, we can adopt an unconscious attitude that God is just one powerful reality among many, that he has certain limits regarding how much he can do or how much he is willing to do. This doubt manifests itself in our limiting what we give to God and how far we are willing to trust him. Under this particular aspect, some of us may have a faith no better than a pagan's trust in a well-meaning demigod. If we notice in ourselves any such doubts, we need to dispel them because a true reliance on God's power is necessary to advance in the spiritual life and any worthwhile ministry. St. Paul wrote, bear your share of, the heart of hardship for the gospel with the strength which comes from God. Relying on the power of God implies that we have complete faith in that power. Faith enables us to bear the hardships which naturally arise from practicing our Catholic faith and bearing witness as we should. We are all called to be saints, and our faith is both the foundation of this calling and what brings it to fulfillment. This is why the apostles ask our Lord to increase their faith. His re in his reply, our Lord takes the opportunity then to confirm the power of a strong faith. He uses figurative language in making his point, associating the power of a faith as small as a mustard seed with doing something as incredible as planting a tree in the sea. On another occasion, he said that if our faith was strong enough, it could move mountains. Yet, moving us away from unbelief and sin seems to be an even more momentous task for our faith. Our Lord is not assuring us that a strong faith will grant our every whim, but only that it will unfailingly obtain for us what we need to do His will, no matter how unlikely it may seem that we get it. So we need to ask, what is God's will? St. Paul wrote, this is the will of God, your sanctification. It's easy to understand, but truly a mountain of work which needs to be moved for each one of us. Our sanctification is nothing short of a miracle which God desires to accomplish in us, but he will not do it without our cooperation, and that requires our placing our faith in him. We must believe he has our back, so to speak, as we go about our day do doing his will, not hesitating to act or speak in a way that conforms to the teachings he has revealed. On one occasion, when our Lord was asked to work a miracle, he responded, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. It was a complaint. The person replied, Lord, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Our Lord wants us to believe on the authority of his word, and that comes to us not through our skills of interpreting the Bible, but through the church he founded to preach it to us. When the Apostle Thomas saw our Lord's wounds and finally accepted the truth of the resurrection, our Lord commented that Thomas believed because he had seen, 
but more blessed are those who believe without seeing, that is, who don't see miracles or other assurances from heaven, but place their faith in the authoritative word of his church. Each of us has been called to be holy in God's sight. This is the most important task we have, and yet our sanctification is primarily God's work. We must have faith in God that he is not just responsible or good, but also that he is all-powerful and will use that power to obtain our salvation, the salvation of his beloved children, whether our limited perception understands it or not. Let us pray, as the apostles did, for an increase of faith that would bring us to the sacraments, to Mass, and to adoration, a faith that would make us docile to church teaching and devoted to our Blessed Mother, a faith that would move us to actively promote a culture of life, protecting it against the errors and evils within our culture and government, which is exceptionally strong here in California. To gain the victory, we need the power coming from our faith to go out and do the right thing, to make God's voice heard. And when we receive the victory, may we give thanks to God, who will reward our faith with the gift of himself. Let us stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now lift our hearts and voices in prayer to God our Father, the author of all life, for our needs and those of the whole human family. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, may they continue to preach the gospel of life and inspire the faithful to witness courageously to the sanctity of all human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may they use their authority to protect the rights of all in their care, especially the rights to life and religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For all those who work in pro-life ministries, may they be blessed and strengthened by God for all their efforts on behalf of the unborn, the dying, and all God's beloved children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering, especially Daniel Zen, Donnell Malugan, Margot McLaren, and Sol Tierra, may they find healing and comfort in their faith in the love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, especially Catherine Morris, may they live forever in the joy and peace of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions submitted to our St. John's Prayer Line Ministries, and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Aaron Vakoyevich, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, source of truth and creator of all life, give us the courage to defend our faith and to promote all that contributes to the moral and spiritual renewal of our society. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is found in the Missal, number 161. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Number 161. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. 
You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Cabin, our bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our first communion hymn is found in the Missal, number 264, There is a Balm in Gilead, number 264. Found in the Missal, number 283, where charity and love prevail, number 283. Charity and love. 
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the announcements for this Sunday. 40 Days for Life sign-up will be after the Mass. Uh, you can join the movement with prayer, fasting, and vigils. There's more information in the bulletin or our parish website. And you can sign up at the Knights of Columbus table, which is out there, collecting the pro-life bottles, the Pennies from Heaven collection, or Bear Witness collection, as you like. And thank you for your great support of life. Uh, just a reminder, the front pew on both sides of the church here in the nave are reserved for those with limited mobility, uh, those with walkers, canes, wheelchairs, etc., and also those accompanying them. So uh, please uh, reserve those seats uh, to facilitate the priests uh, giving communion out to those people first. For all the other announcements, kindly check the bulletin or our parish website. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>